Hello and welcome to today's video. It is TIA Tuesday, so there is going to be a TIA uh, video today. Um, the last two videos were about TIA timers, so about IEC timers to be more precise. Today is actually about TIA timers, about S7 timers. Um, they behave a little bit different and they are actually, my hint, never use them. Like if you can avoid, d then don't use them. Because those timers, they are antique. They're old. They have been used for many, many, many years. Uh, they've been used in 300, uh, in the S7 300s. They've even been used in the last generation, the S5 families. That's why they are still here. They are basically as an interfacing and for people that do not want to use the new ones, the standardized ones, they only want to use the Siemens timers. That's why also they are listed in our TIA portal in the timer operations and there we have legacy meaning old stuff, right? old stuff that is only there for compatibility reasons. <clears throat> yeah, uh, we've talked about all the upper ones here. Now we talk about the legacy ones and you see there's one, two, three, four, five and in other instructions, five more instructions down here. I will only talk about the upper five here because they behave similar to our four IEC timers here. They are a little bit different. I will explain in what extent. So let's let's just use one. S pulse is, well, make a guess, similar to our pulse timer. It's not exactly like the IEC pulse timer. It is similar, right? They're all just a little bit similar. They're not the same. I hate using them. I actually, when I can avoid, I will not use them. <clears throat> yeah, now I've got this timer in here, right? This timer, and it looks similar to our, let's take one, uh, the TP is our pulse timer. Let's maybe put one as comparison here. And you see, they look similar, but not the same. The timer we talked so far, if you don't know about the IEC timers here, I made a video about timers, so check that out. Maybe I put a link or this exclamation mark on top there or something, uh, but check it out. Um, this pulse timer here needs two inputs. This is when it should start and this is the time. You see this pulse timer here has three inputs. This is when it should start. I have prepared some bits for it. This is when should the timer start. I think I put it on M00, yes. Then the TV, that is the time, how long, the timer value, right? The timer value, it's the PT, the preset time, and in our old timers, it's the timer value. And this is the first problem. I can type in five seconds and you see, now it says S5T. What does it say for my newer one? If I say uh, five seconds as well, I can't do that. Um, let's say 5,000 because it's in milliseconds. What? Oh, I, I would have to create the database here first. Sure, why not? There we go. Bop. And 5,000. Come on. Why won't you work? Here we go. <clears throat> so here it says just T, right? You see here S5T and here you see T. The difference is S5T indicates it is an S5 timing format. The S5 timing format is not in milliseconds, it's not in seconds, it's not in something. There's a code actually in there. It is two things. It is two bits that's nothing. Then it's two bits that indicate a multiplier. And then there's three times four bits, binary code decimal, the time value actually then. Doesn't matter what exactly that is, but it's bullshit. <laughs> it's just useless. It's someone thought about it, thought this is a smart idea. You're actually losing a lot of data and it's not precise at all. Here it is in milliseconds. So if the, if the number raises by one, it's one more milliseconds. Here, if the number raises by one, it's either, I don't know, it could be anything. It could even be an error actually. Bullshit data type, right? Not really need S5 time. I don't like using it. You see, I re really don't recommend using those, but they're there. <laughs> so I'm going to explain it. And the last input this pulse timer has is actually a reset, which we don't have for the TP. For the TP, we would use this RT, this one here, right? But here I can just put anything as the reset directly there. Uh, and I've prepared that. Here we go. The next thing this one needs, the one I had earlier, I just created a new data block. And this is an instance. I can use an infinite amount of number of timers, the IEC timers, the blue ones, the good ones, right? Of those, I have a limited amount. This limited amount is measured in S7 timers we can use. 
So this is an S7 timer actually using an S5 data type. Bullshit. <clears throat> so here I just need to put basically which timer do I want to use. And all timers start with T and then you just have spaces T0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How high that number goes, like how many timers you can use is depending on your PLC. I have the data sheet of my PLC that I'm using. I have it opened up here, right? And in this data sheet, there is somewhere, blah, 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 so much text, so much text, so much text, counters, timers, and their retent uh, retentivity. In here, it says S7 times, I can use 2048. That's it, I can use 2048 timers and then it's blocked. This is because they are hardware-wise really there. There are a little circuit in the PLC. So they are really hardware timers, timer blocks inside the PLC. That's why they're also limited. A bigger PLC has more timers of those, a smaller PLC has none. An S7 1200, the 1200 has exactly zero. The 1200 is not compatible with those timers only with the IEC, which I always recommend, always use the IEC timer, right? <clears throat> yeah, there are seven times depending on the PLC used. <clears throat> so what happens now? Let me just download this. Let me load and finish and click on the glasses here. I have BI, I have BCD. Those are just the time as output. BI is in binary format, BCD is in BCD format no person ever in the whole world would really need those, right? You want the time in, make a guess, in time, in seconds, and not in binary, not in BCD. This is coded. No, this is maybe in the program you need it, but not on a display, not, not anywhere. This is not for humans. You would have to recalculate it. It's, again, bullshit. <clears throat> so I'm also not using those. Um, what we need is the queue, the query output. So basically the output of this whole, whole block. Um, and let's see. How should a pulse timer behave? I turn on the input, right? I turn on the input and the output should be on for the amount of time I put in here. That is correct, right? Now what should happen as well is if I turn on the input and turn it back off, you see this stays on and on top it also, it doesn't start, it continue timing, right? But after some time it actually turns blue, meaning not true anymore. This is a strange behavior. Here's what we can do. Of course, we can use the help function and look at how does this pulse time actually work. And there we have the behavior here in the help function. So I have the query, it's the output, right? The output is one as long as my input is one and the timer is running, right? So the output will, so that's scenario one. Let's, let's do scenario one here. So scenario one, ah, screw using three screens. <coughs> so, sin wait, uh, this is just, I couldn't read it anymore. So scenario one, here we go. Camera, please focus on me. So this is what we want to have, right? So um, the timer is on, the input is on, the timer is running, the output is on for the specified amount of time. Let's see if that works. Output is on for the specified amount of time. So five seconds, five seconds. And after five seconds, the output will turn off again. That worked. Now, the, the next thing, and I need to be a little bit small. I can also actually push that window a little bit higher. Still not perfect. <clears throat> the next thing is, if I turn the input S on, right? And turn it, the output will be on as long as the input is turned on and will turn off Right here, I turn the input off, the output will also turn off. So let's see how that works. Output, whoops, wrong button, whoops, uh, select this. Output on, now I turn it off, and what can we see? The output here is still on, it's still green, and it turns off after the five seconds. That's not, that's not what this graph shows. The graph shows if I turn it off here, it's also turned off here. That's kind of stupid, right? Because in the program I can see it's still on, it's still on, it's still on, it's still on, and after five seconds it's off. That's strange. That's not what this diagram reflects. And here is one thing that I hate. <laughs> this is just wrong. This is just, I, I hate it. I gotta say this is, this is not a good uh, execution here from the software. The output here, right? You can see it. The output is on, 
It's on, on, on. I can see in the program. This output is on. It's green. After five seconds, it's off. Here's the thing. If I now hook up something here on the output, right? I called it query. <clears throat> if I hook something there, we can see what it really is because the green color does not show the truth. The green color shows something, but not the truth, not the current status. So I turn it on, I turn it off, and now you see the query is also off. The output here is off, uh, is on, but the query is off. Let's see that again. The query turns off, you see this, but this output is on. The output changes at some point in time, but the query, this is bullshit. Like, like this is just wrong from the display. 100% just wrong. Um, it comes from there. If we turn off all the inputs here, this block here is not evaluated anymore by the program. The block is not evaluated by the program. Um, that's why we can't see the change anymore. But internally, as this thing here is a separate hardware, this small chip in there, this small circuit in there, it continues and continues and continues even if we can't see it in the program. It's an asynchronous execution. We can't see it in the program anymore, but it is doing its thing. And after the time, this output here connected to it, even though we can't really see it in the program, changes the state. So that's very, very bad. Don't get confused by it. Right? Because it's not displaying the correct information. You see, I turn it on, I turn it off. This here is still green. This is blue because the status that's connected to it is actually off, which is not what I can see, but that's how it is. This is stupid. I just hate it. I gotta admit, I just hate it. It's wrong. This is, this is wrong information. <clears throat> um, but let's see if the timer behaves like this. I can just hit control two. So it's on and it's still running here. I turn it off. The output is off as well. That's true. So that works. Right? I turn it off and the output, the query here is actually off. So what we see here is not what we see here, but what we see at the query here at the output that I connected. This is correct. This is what we can see here in the graph. I hate those. <laughs> I gotta admit, I, I, I know I said it like 10 times now. I hate those timers. Don't use them. If you can avoid, don't use them anymore. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, make, it, it kind of makes sense because it's a separate hardware. This time as a separate hardware, which we can't evaluate here in the program anymore because we turn it off. It's still, I hate it. I, I hate it so much. You need to know it <clears throat> to be able to troubleshoot it. You could be troubleshooting for ages if you don't know it. Right? This, right now, I could search for ages because this shows me a different thing than there is. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, and we have also this... Reset input here, if I turn it on, the timer will reset, like in the graph. Yeah. <clears throat> I recommend not using those. There's reasons why we have them for, mainly for communication between um, different devices that still use this. In future, those will be gone. And Siemens PLCs are the only ones that use those. There's no other devices, except for Siemens devices, but no other devices from any manufacturer. They all use standardized timers. We have now here one, two, three, four, five different timer types. I will not show them in detail right now um, because they are quite easy to come by. If you just select the timer here, I hit F1, uh, the help window will open. It takes a second or two, maybe a minute because it's actually quite a huge tool. And therefore each of the timers in the list here, I can find the timing diagram. So you can search for the timer that is suited for you. We have an extended pulse timer, whatever that is. We have an on delay timer, an ODT, right? an on delay timer. We have an, a retentive on delay timer, whatever that is. And we have an off delay timer. Right? I won't go into detail with all those timers. They behave very, very similar to the timers I explained in the other video. So they behave very similar to the standardized timer but not exactly. Some of them behave differently and all of them have this reset input. Um, if you want to just test them out, you can easily in your program now click on the pulse here and I can say, hey, I want to use an on delay timer instead. I change this, I download and now I can test the on delay behavior. But again, here is the hint. Here is the hint, this on delay timer don't look at the queue output and what's connected here. You can see this is again on 
and this is off. You saw it, right? You see it. It's this is on the green line, but this is zero. This is off. So it's what it displays is bullshit. <laughs> I said my uh, this will de get demonetized this video because I said bullshit so many times. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. <clears throat> but that's how it is, right? So I turn it on and I turn it off, and this somehow is also not turning on. So look at the query if you connect when you connect something here look at that don't look at the line don't trust the line because it lies in this case and you see it because this is a separate piece of hardware it makes sense but it's still displaying wrong information so this was a 15 minute rant me saying don't use those but you can use them but i recommend using the others um if you've got questions on those leave a comment below um do not forget to like, do not forget to subscribe, do not forget to never use those. <laughs> um, unless you need them. If you need them, you know you need them. And if you see them, try to change it maybe to the new way. I see timers, very good. Yeah. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. Tier Thursday is coming up, so all days that start with a T, I will make a TIA portal video and hope you like this. Hope it helps a little bit. Um, if you've got questions, comments below, and I'll see you in the next video on Thursday. Bye. <laughs>